Hello people, in this video let us look at vernal keratopathy. Okay, so basically where are we? We started off with um, conjunctivitis. Before this we have already seen conjunctiva anatomy and all that. In conjunctivitis, we saw what conjunctivitis is. Then we saw types of conjunctivitis in which there is infective and then there is allergic etc. Under allergic, we are focusing today on the vernal keratoconjunctivitis. In vernal keratoconjunctivitis, which is also called as spring catara right um, or vkc guys so basically this is an allergic conjunctivitis right and we saw the etiopathogenesis right why it happens because of lymphocyte alteration and then because of exaggerated ige response to common allergens <clears throat> usually it happens in summer right we saw that then we saw the pathology how the epithelial cells will undergo hyperplasia they'll invade this uh, adenoid lymphoid layer right then we saw the fibrous layer will undergo hyaline change, etc. In adenoid layer, there will be a lot of uh, eosinophils, uh, plasma cells and uh, what else? We saw histiocytes along with lymphocytes. There will be proliferation of these cells. Then we saw the vascular layer also, how they will vasodilation will happen, vaso uh, permeability will increase and then there will be a lot of uh, proliferation of these vessels. Then we saw what the clinical features are. We saw that there will be Marked burning and itching sensation, intolerable it will be if the person goes to sun and all, they really don't like it. They have photophobia, lacrimation, string discharge or ropey discharge and heaviness of eyelid, of the lids. Okay. Then palpebral, in that we saw different forms also, palpebral form where you have the cobblestone um, appearance, ropey white discharge. In severe cases, it can become like a cauliflower, right? Then bulbar limbal form we saw. Uh, red triangular congestion, gelatinous thickened accumulation, hornet trantas spots. Now mixed form also we saw where both the features will be there. Now we are looking at the clinical features only in that we are looking at the corneal involvement. Okay, This is where we have to start the video. Corneal involvement, <coughs> vernal keratopathy. Basically because of the limbal lesions, right? because of the limbal lesions which can extend, they can get corneal or cornea also can get involved. Right? So, this is very frequent in the palpebral form they are saying. In the palpebral form, it is very frequent. Okay. It is very frequent in the palpebral form. So, corneal involvement is frequent in the palpebral form of vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Okay. So, because the limbal lesions can extend into the cornea. There are five types of lesions here. The punctate epithelial keratitis. Okay. Then you have the ulcerative vernal keratitis or the shield ulceration. Then you have the vernal co corneal plaques. Then you have the subepithelial scarring. And then you have pseudogeron toxon. Okay. So we are just making it easier to read there. <clears throat> so what are the five lesions? Punctate epithelial keratitis, ulcerative vernal keratitis, vernal corneal plaques, subepithelial scarring, pseudogeron Toxo. Guys, so basically look at the uh, lesions here, punctate epithelial keratitis. So here they are saying the upper cornea is usually associated with palpebral form of disease. Okay, so it involves the in palpebral form of disease. So if this is the cornea, the upper part of the cornea will be involved. The lesions always stain with rose bengal and invariably with fluorescein dye. So basically here they are saying the upper cornea will be affected and it will stain with rose bengal okay, and with fluorescein dye. F-L-U-O-R-E-S-C-E-I-N, fluorescein dye. Okay. So it will stain with rose bengal and fluorescein dye. That is punctate epithelial keratitis. Say, say the lesion names guys, uh, the five lesions say punctate epithelial keratitis, then you saw some shield ulceration, then what else? That is ulcerative vernal keratitis, shield ulceration, then you have vernal corneal plaque, subepithelial scarring, pseudogeron toxon. Okay. So now let us move on to ulcerative vernal keratitis, shield ulceration. So basically the presence of uh, shallow transverse ulcer in upper part of cornea, shallow transverse ulcer in upper part of cornea, 
right again upper part of cornea only they seem to be interested in the ulceration results due to epithelial macro erosions it is a serious problem which may be complicated by bacterial keratitis so again here upper cornea only they are talking about here there will be epithelial macro erosion okay because of which there will be problem upper part of cornea only epithelial macro erosion there this is a serious problem and there can be complication like bacterial keratitis so it can lead to a complication that is bacterial keratitis 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 some inflammation of the cornea right look at the image from textbook khurana shield also this is showing shield also okay then coming to the third uh, one here vernal corneal plaque vernal corneal plaque okay so basically this results due to coating of bare areas of epithelial macro erosions with layer of altered exudates so this epithelial macro erosions are getting covered epithelial macro erosions are getting covered or coated coated with layer of altered exudates so that will be corneal plaque vernal corneal plaque look at the diagram here vernal corneal plaque the same erosion is covered by altered exudates then the fourth one sub epithelial scarring occurs in the form of a ring scar ring scar sub epithelial scarring ring scar something like this guys sub epithelial scarring ring scar then moving on to the last one pseudo geron toxon pseudo geron toxon means what something that is not true right pseudo pseudo geron toxon basically it can develop in recurrent limbal disease and it is characterized by classical cupid's bow outline okay so basically they didn't say explain at all why it is called pseudo geron so they just said it is characterized by cupid's bow outline look at this cupid's bow and look at this can you see something here cupid's bow now let us try to understand why it is called pseudo geron toxon so they are saying it is a lesion that resembles small segment of uh, geron toxon and is seen in many individuals with limbal vernal atopic keratoconjunctivitis it's an important clinical finding okay so what exactly are you understanding here basically what they are trying to say is it is resembling geron toxon okay it resembles geron toxon it looks like a cupid's bow mainly it is showing that this person has a history of allergic conjunctivitis geron toxon is something that is coming with age right in geron toxon that comes with age actually this would be this this would be something like this okay if it is complete but here you are seeing just a cupid bow kind of a thing now let us look at the treatment of vkc that is vernal keratoconjunctivitis the treatment so basically the clinical course you understand first of all it is a self limiting condition right we have already discussed this in the beginning it is a self limiting condition it you, burns out after 5 to 10 years burns out spontaneously not sure why they are using this word burns out spontaneously after 5 to 10 years right now what can be the differential for this differential diagnosis what else could it be when you see something like this it could be uh, differentiated from trachoma you need to differentiate it from trachoma right you should know that it is not trachoma you have to differentiate it right it can be trachoma with predominant papillary hypertrophy so it can be trachoma with predominant papillary hypertrophy right it, okay let us look at the 
treatment of VKC. Guys, are you ready for to look at uh, look at the treatment of uh, VKC? Let's do one thing. Let's continue in the next video. Okay, treatment of VKC, where uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis, that is allergic, a type of allergic conjunctivitis. Thank you.